Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. We focus on today's first lesson from Isaiah 50. In the name of Jesus, dear fellow cross-bearers, what do we say to people when the cross gets heavy? Jesus has given all of us a cross to bear. He himself bore a cross as our Savior, as our substitute, took our sins away. And he wants us to stay close to him. So he lays a cross on us too. Without it, maybe we would wander. Maybe we would give up. Maybe we would forget how valuable our faith is and kind of misplace it along life's way. So Jesus gives us this blessing, a painful blessing, but a blessing that he puts a cross on us and calls us to follow him. So what do we say to people? What do we say to each other when the cross gets heavy? You've heard about the fight or flight response, I'm sure. That's the usual way that our creator designed us to respond to stress or to heavy things or pressure things. You either fight it or you take flight from it. Everything in the body and the mind get amped up to do one of those two things, to respond to it in some way. Either fight it or take flight from it. But sometimes there's a third option. Just stand there and take it. Just carry it. Just endure it. Just go through it. But certainly not by ourselves, certainly not with our own strength. When our cross gets heavy, we can trust our gracious God to sustain us. Isaiah had a difficult assignment. Isaiah's entire ministry was a cross. The Lord gave Isaiah his marching orders and said, go preach to people who don't care. Go preach to people who don't want to listen. Go preach to people that they should change even though they won't. Go preach to people that they need to turn from their ways and turn to me and be saved even though they won't. Go and warn them of the coming judgment that will fall on them because of their refusal to listen, even though they won't listen. Oh, and that little leftover group that do listen, comfort them. So what does Isaiah say to that little leftover group that does listen? Hang in there. It's all going to be all right in the end. Promise? Promise. It doesn't feel all right. No. Nope. It feels a little bit like we're getting crushed. Yeah. It feels a little bit like we're overwhelmed and outmatched and under attack and have no defense against it. Yep. It does feel that way. But everything is going to be all right in the end. Our gracious God will save us, will sustain us, will graciously, powerfully carry us through. In Isaiah's day, that little leftover group of listeners who still trusted in the word of God and his promises, they would be attacked and they would be crushed and they would be devastated and get raked over the coals and everything. And yet, they would make it. They would survive. They would hang in there, not because they were so good and faithful, but because their gracious God <coughs> sustained them. So there's the third choice. The natural response that we have is fight or flight. And Isaiah preaches this third option. Just stand there and take it. Simply endure it. With the help of your gracious God, he will sustain you all the way through. Listen to Isaiah. He describes a disciple of the Lord enduring persecution. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. What? Why? Are you crazy? Is your fight-or-flight response broken? 
Stand up and fight back. Don't take that. Do something. Get out of there if you have to. Do something, anything. Nope. This disciple just stood there and endured it. Why? Because he was a disciple. Isaiah says, speaking as this disciple, the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I've not been rebellious. I have not turned away. Isaiah is describing one of those disciples of the Lord, one of those faithful few, one of those little leftover group of listeners who did not close their ears to God's word, who did not turn their back on God's word, who continued to listen to God's word and trust in the promises of God all the way through all of what they endured. So this disciple had his ears open to God's word. He had his heart open to believing God's word. He had his mouth instructed and taught as a disciple and a preacher to speak God's word. God's word that sustains the weary. So when persecution came, this disciple was able to endure it. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. It sounds crazy. But he didn't fight it, and he didn't flee from it. He simply endured it. How? Didn't Isaiah talk about words that sustain the weary? Here's some of them. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. The sovereign Lord set the mountains in place and the stars in place and the oceans in place. The sovereign Lord keeps the earth spinning on its axis. The sovereign Lord commands countless angel armies to guard and protect and watch over his dear people. So with the sovereign Lord helping, this disciple could endure anything. Not by his own strength, but because simply he said, the sovereign Lord is there helping me. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. Flint is a really hard rock. So having a flint face is like having thick skin, as we say, and then some. It's saying no matter what people say or do, I am not going to change who I am, I'm not going to let their words to me or about me change me or affect me. Having a flint face says those people don't get the last word. The sovereign Lord gets the last word. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? Our sovereign Lord gets the last word. And in fact, he doesn't wait till the end to speak it. He's already spoken it. This gracious word that sustains the weary. What does the sovereign Lord say? He says that we who are sinful by nature have been forgiven by the blood of Christ. He says that we who were guilty and condemned by our own works have been justified and declared innocent in the sight of God because of Christ's works. That we who do nothing to please God or vindicate ourselves in the sight of God have been vindicated and completely approved in the sight of God because of what Christ has done and what Christ has achieved. If the sovereign Lord speaks that, and he has, about us, his people, then Who's possibly going to say anything different? Who's possibly going to contradict God? They can try. They can say what they want and do what they want to us, but that won't affect who we are. That won't affect what he says about us. It doesn't change where we stand eternally with our God. They can say it, but it won't stick. His word lasts and endures. They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Persecution and persecutors won't last. They have their expiry date, their guaranteed end. But that little leftover group 
that listens to the word of God, we live forever. We bear the cross and Jesus says, whoever loses life for me and for the gospel will be saved. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? I can see you. I can see you silently, invisibly raising your hand and saying, I do. I fear the Lord. I believe his word. I trust his promises. Then this is for you. Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, again, I see you, silently, invisibly raising your hand saying, that's me. I'm walking in the dark. It feels like I've got no light. It feels like I'm all alone here. I see you and God sees you. This is for you. Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on their God. That's it. When the cross gets heavy, rely on the Lord. Trust in him. You don't need to fight it. You don't need to flee from it. Simply endure it, not by your own strength, but with God's help. Trust in him. He will sustain you. But how can he, how will he? Not your business, is it? He promises to carry you through. He promises. He, the sovereign Lord who made the world and the entire universe. He, the Lord God of heaven and earth, he says he will sustain you and carry you through. So trust in him. And maybe you have a little voice inside that says, all sounds good on paper. Sounds good when Isaiah writes it and when he quotes his disciple, whoever that is. We might have a little voice inside that says, Isaiah, that disciple of yours that you're quoting, he doesn't seem to get it. It sounds too easy. Trust in the Lord? Yeah, that's hard. He doesn't seem like that disciple has really been through it the way we have. Maybe, Isaiah, it seems like this disciple of yours is just an imaginary disciple facing imaginary persecution with this imaginary flint face. And Isaiah says, nope, he's real. This disciple went through real trouble and real persecution. He wasn't just a disciple of the Lord. He was the ultimate disciple of the Lord. He wasn't just a disciple of the Lord. He's the one all the disciples follow. He's the reason we have disciples. He's the original cross bearer. His name is Jesus the Christ, the promised Savior. That's the one speaking here in our text. Listen again. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. You hear it, right? And you can see it happening. 700 years after Isaiah, Jesus lived that in real life. A real cross, real persecution, real hardship, really hard, And it was all for you. Jesus would have had every reason to fight back or to flee from it, to snap his fingers and end it, to, as he said, call down legions of angels from his father and just make the persecution go away. He did nothing wrong. He was completely innocent. So there was no reason he should have expected or deserved to have anything happen to him. And yet he endured it. He bore that cross because he loved you so dearly. He accepted it on his own back to take your sin away and my sin. He took your sin and my sin, your guilt and my guilt, and soaked it up with his cross. So that since he bore his cross, since he did not fight it or flee from it, but endured it out of love for us, we stand vindicated before God. The sovereign Lord has justified us. The Sovereign Lord has spoken about you and about me, his dear people. I forgive you. You belong to me. So if God has said that, if God has said in Christ, you are my dear people, I am near you, I am with you through my promises in word and sacrament, I take my spirit and put my spirit in you and on you, who else can say anything different? Who else can say anything different that's going to stick? 
the sovereign Lord will sustain us. So what do we say when we bear a cross and when that cross gets heavy because we belong to Jesus? We can start by saying that. We belong to Jesus. And therefore we are blessed. Therefore we bear his name. Therefore we receive his saving blessings. Therefore eternal life is ours because he died and rose again and promises that we will too. We can say exactly what he himself said through the words inspired through the, in the mouth of Isaiah. Trust in the name of the Lord. Rely on their God. We can say what Jesus himself said. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We can say what Jesus himself said. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, we will not be disgraced. We know we will not be put to shame. With the help of your God, simply endure it. Trust in him as you bear the cross following Jesus. He bore his cross to save you eternally. Your true, saving, gracious God will sustain you home to eternal life. Amen. Please stand with me. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.